Good evening, everybody. I'm Jerry Willis. Small investors getting the short end of the stick is something that we've seen a whole lot of. My next guest says the only way to even the playing field is to start at the top and remake the entire financial system. Joining me now is Republican Congressman Ron Paul from Texas. Congressman, welcome. Great to see you. Thank you. Nice to be with you. All right, well, let's talk about your view of how things should be shaken up. You've been calling recently for an audit of the gold uh, held by the federal government. Why do we need to do that? Well, it'd be nice for the American people to know whether or not the gold is there. They took it from the American people, and then uh, they made it illegal for gold, the people to own the gold. And in the in recent decade or so, uh, central banks have either sold a lot of gold or leased it out. Uh, now, our government denies that they have done any of that, so they shouldn't have any fear of an audit. And we have not had an audit for more than 30 years to find out if the gold is there. And I just think it's reasonable. Uh, most people who run a business do audits and inventory. So I think the American people deserve to know whether all the gold is there and what uh, purity it is. Well, you know, it's funny because I've been to the New York Federal Reserve, and in the basement there's, they show you the gold. Are you saying that you don't <laughs> think now that it might not be there, that if we went to Fort Knox, you and I today, there may be no gold at all? Well, you know, that's the whole thing. It might be sitting there, but you don't know what the obligations are because things are done in secret. This is the reason I argued for the auditing of the Fed, because there's all kinds of agreements and plans and guarantees between central banks. So you don't know exactly. But there are some people who are really studying this and claim that some of that gold has been sold. And the truth is, I don't have any idea. But as a member of Congress and of the Banking Committee, I think I have an obligation to at least ask some questions. You who want knows? To know. Maybe someday... Hey, who knows? Someday we might want to have a gold standard again and quit all this printing press money. So well, let's, nice let's talk about something you just. Let's talk about something you just brought up, and that's the Federal Reserve. You don't believe in the Federal Reserve. You don't think it's a good thing. Why not? Uh, because I don't believe in counterfeiting, and I don't believe in central banking, and that's what counter, uh, that's what central bankers are. It's controlling the money supply, and uh, the our government, the uh, United States, has the reserve currency of the world. So that individual or group who can determine interest rates over with monopoly control and the supply of money, they have more power than the president. Uh, Bernanke is probably more powerful than anybody else in in the world. He does it in secret. And have you uh, do you recall ever? The Federal Reserve Board, the other members on the FOMC uh, overruling a chairman? No, the chairman is a dictator of interest rates and the supply of money. And, of course, the main reason why I, I really uh, oppose the Federal Reserve is they create the bubbles, and therefore they create the bus, they create the business cycle, and they, they create a housing bubble, and all the trouble we have now, we can be, it can be laid at the feet of the Federal Reserve, and the sooner the people in this country realize this, the sooner they will wake up. I mean, this is not a new issue. Uh, both Jefferson and Hamilton argued over this. Uh, Hamilton wanted the central bank, but the Constitution said, no, we don't want to have runaway inflation like we had with the continental dollar. We don't want anything other than silver gold to be legal tender because they will abuse the money. They'll print too much and they'll cause these problems. This is not a new problem. It's been around for a long time. Well, talk about spending too much money. I know you signed the letter to uh, Barney Frank saying, uh, that you wanted to see what his plan was for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. What do you think should be done here? A lot of the discussion in the last couple of weeks about what we can do about the housing market. Americans are in trouble here. This isn't some kind of airy-fairy debate over how the financial system should be run. This is really important to average Americans. Well, we should get rid of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and privatize it just like we should do with, with the Fed. But the Fed worked in collusion with the Congress because the Fed created the credit and Congress created all the affirmative action programs and said everybody has a right to a home even if they don't have any down payment and uh, interest rates have to be lower than the market rate. And uh, the sooner we get back to the market, we have to have a belief in free markets once again and sound money. We have to believe right. the market should set interest rates. We have to have an understanding that capital doesn't coming out, of, com out of a computer at the Fed. Well, let me ask you this question, though, because critics of the view that you're, you're supporting here, that Fannie and Freddie should go away, say that if you do away with those two entities who currently stand behind nine out of ten new loans being made every single day, that you'll kill what's the nascent movement in the housing market, that you'll make the housing market <laughs> even worse than it is right now. 
do you believe that? I mean, can we have a housing market at the bottom of this cycle with no Fannie and no Freddie? Well, there, there would have to be some adjustments, obviously, but how can it get much worse than what we heard this week? It was all created by the Fed. The Fed and, and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, by doing this, create too many houses. There was, you know, all these millions of houses, extra houses, and now you've got to get rid of the propping up. See, what you need in, in a recession or depression is the correction. The correction means that uh, the prices have to come down and the market has to clear the market. So we're doing everything conceivable in Washington we're trying to keep the prices of housing up. We're trying to stimulate housing. And you want, you want the government out of the way so that uh, these prices will come down and poor people can buy houses once again. But uh, the, the worst thing in the world you can have is a collusion between the Federal Reserve creating credit and politicians who say you, you have a right mm -hmm. to a house for free. And mm -hmm. this is why we have housing bubbles. So, no, you can, there, there's not only worthless assets in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, there's probably a lot of good assets. And just like General Motors should have been allowed to go bankrupt, the good assets should have been bought up. And and the same way with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. There's a lot of people, the large majority of people who have those mortgages are good, you know, good mortgages. I mean, but you get 10% bad mortgages, you, your country's in bad trouble. But you don't throw away the concepts of free markets and freedom in order to prop up this 10%. You need to liquidate it. You need to, you know, change it. You need to have but, people but making loans But Congressman, quickly, we don't have a lot of time reason. here. The kind of radical action you're talking about, couldn't that tip us in, not into just another recession, but into a depression if, if things are so uncertain? Well, there's a lot of uncertainty already, and this would, uh, this would bring about certainty about what, what, to, uh, what to do. Now, if you're worried about a depression, we just have to continue to do the things that caused our recession, and that is we had been, we created a bubble by the Fed. We created, we printed too much money, spent too much money, borrowed too much money, and had too much regulation. So we're trying to solve the problem by printing too much money, borrowing too much money, spending too much money, and more regulation. You can't do it. You're driving, people who believe that are right. driving this economy into the Depression. Okay. We're doing exactly what we did in the 30s. It's very, very dangerous. Things are going to get a lot worse. Interesting conversation. Congressman Paul, thanks for your help today. We appreciate it. Thank you.